Hello, everybody, and welcome to the APL, where we are back another Thursday night of action. I'm Elsa the Queen. I'm here with Bonfire yet again, and we got Wookie on the production. We're excited for you to join us for this match tonight. We got another qualification round match, but this time it's do or die. It's the winner goes to the playoffs and the loser goes home, and we are going to jump into the draft. As you can see, we've got Bing Chillers, uh, Fu uh, it, or sorry, Bing Chillers Fury, um, and then we also have Oblivion Esports Ruby. Bonfire, last week we watched Oblivion Esports Ruby on the broadcast. They did fall 2-0 to the flash abusers this is their chance at redemption yeah and uh i think it's their chance to prove that last week was not their normal showing they did not have a good week last week but bing chillers is not uh flash abusers they are i think not on that tier of play and so i do think that this is oblivion esports ruby opportunity to sneak into the playoffs and to get them a spot um although for bing chillers i think they think the same thing they saw that oblivion esports ruby is weak right now you know they are vulnerable so both of these teams are going to play with everything they've got today and look you play seven games of a regular season it all comes down to one night and uh yeah, I, both of these teams have everything to play for. So it should be really, really fun to see how they adapt to the meta and uh, how they play their hearts out in this all important game. And it starts with the bans. And already we're seeing some high priority bans being thrown out. Uh, it's gonna be the Rel, it's gonna be the Maokai, uh, just have been incredibly strong forever. On the other side of things, uh, maybe some AP threats, some annoying uh, CC threats with the Gragas and the Fiddlesticks. Yeah, um, Fiddlesticks being taken away. That is a champion that I hope to see more of eventually here, but obviously not in this one. But, you know, it's good to start to see people recognize that it's strong. That's the first step um, in the process. But another tank jungler taken off the board. So almost three tank junglers potentially off the board there from the Bing Chillers. And last week for the Bing Chillers, they did come through with a victory. Um, that one was against Khan Esports Z, who we've definitely been familiar with on this APL broadcast as well. So that has led them to this moment here um, where they will take on Oblivion Esports Ruby. So remember that in the regular season, um, as we come to this first pick, Oblivion Esports Ruby, they uh, ended up ending uh, slightly positive, um, I believe, and Bing Chillers, eight and eight as far as games, um, and then as far as series four and three. So, you know, there's a reason that they're here in the playoffs as Tristan has picked up for them as the first pick here but they have not like you said been especially dominant per se in APL yeah I think that their strength is that they're coming off of a series win like you talked about to get to this place they had to already make kind of the miracle run so the Cinderella run they want to keep it going but you said it perfectly they are lucky to even be in this position with an 8-8 eight eight game record they have been nothing special this season and I think that's fair to say but you know they're coming off of a win and uh you know you can't speak as you can't speak highly enough about momentum in league of legends also in league of legends as uh, as many teams have shown it's really the meta that can really change a team's success you think drx back in 2022 uh you know once they were able to get the melee mids and the aatrox top won the whole damn thing so uh, it'll be interesting to see if bing chillers really fit well into this current meta and maybe they can make a run that way we'll have to see they do pick up the tristana but the immediate response is the kaisa nautilus which i just love i think kaisa with any form of engage bot still incredibly strong yeah um is very kind of a classic pairing, I guess you could say, with the Kaisa and um, in that bot lane for um, Oblivion Esports Ruby, Raven's Man will be here once again. Remember last week, definitely um, Raven's Man as a standout, um, especially as far as the lane phase, but will be um, playing alongside Toad Step, coming in as a substitute this time. So um, last week we saw Neo Tank, but this week not going to be the case. Um, so we'll see how that affects their synergy as Amumu and Seraphine locked away both champions that we don't necessarily necessarily see a ton of these days but they do have their very specific strengths um, and we'll have to see sort of where things get flipped around here because Amumu um, you know classically in the jungle role but of course more recently we've seen it in support as well kind of the last time it slipped into the meta yeah, look, if Fiddlesticks is your pick of a champion that deserves to be in the meta, I think Amumu will be mine. I think people are sleeping on the CC that Amumu does, people know about, but the damage that you can create with Amumu, uh, you're just constantly on top of somebody 
like a bad cold just constantly tick tick ticking them away until you know they might have to take a take a day off of work and that's what Imumu does he bandage tosses onto you uses the ultimate curse of the sad mummy and just is constantly crying on top of you and uh, spinning in circles with his E and before you know it, it's a lot of your health bar down so I, I love the Imumu pick I am very pro Imumu um, the Seraphine I'm not as high on but it still can be incredibly strong especially paired with the curse of the sad mummy those ultimates go really well together on the other side of things i think we've seen the azir band out quite a lot because of its strength i do know that it got it has been touched up and tweaked a little bit since it was really its strongest about a month ago but still an incredibly strong mid laner and i'm surprised it survived the uh, the banning phase we will see that probably do incredible work uh, if this game goes long yeah, um, and also uh, going as we uh, see Mordekaiser come through as the last ban against Saint of Aegis, going back in time a little bit to week number, uh, well, I'm not sure, it was in the middle of uh, August either way. So about a month ago, these two teams did face off. They are in the same um, division. So it did end up being a 2-1 for Bing Chillers, but looks like it was definitely a close series um, with Oblivion Esports taking that first game. Um, and so, that does kind of bode well for the rest of the series as Braum is being hovered here and locked in, which means Nautilus. We assume that it was going to be going into the support role, but I would assume that that's the one that will get flexed probably into the jungle. So we could see two um, kind of unconventional tank junglers potentially here matching up in this game, depending on how Bing Chillers wants to round things out to themselves. But I don't think there's anywhere left for that Nautilus to go other than into the jungle. Yeah, we, I think it was either us or I was casting for another league and we were talking about a Gwen jungle and mm -hmm. I said Gwen jungle really strong in, in clearing camps, terrible at ganking, maybe the worst ganking jungler you could you could pick. Nautilus, Nautilus is like the opposite of that. I think yeah, the clear is going to take it's going to take forever. This Nautilus might be on their first clear when we hit the 20 minute mark, but the ganks are going to be unbelievable. So, you best believe this Nautilus is going to get on the map early. On the other side of things, you want to talk about a support being switched around. Where the hell is this Karma going? Because we've seen Karma mid in the past, but I think if I had to guess, it would be Karma support Seraphine mid. So all across the board, both of these teams just throwing a wrench in our plants. Very, very strange drafts across the board. Uh, although I do think we're going to have some fairly normal top laners at least. Yeah, um, Nar locked in for being chillers in the top lane. So we'll see what Oblivion Esports Ruby wants to choose into that matchup 1v1, and it will be the Malphite for Saint of Aegis. So opting into that big rock in the top lane against the Nar, definitely not a winning lane matchup, I feel like, early on, but we'll be able to provide so much to the team later on alongside that Nautilus and Prom. So really strong front line here put together for Oblivion Esports Ruby to stand in front of this Azir and Kaisa, hoping that their big carry rules will be able to pull this game out for them in game one. Like I said, first time these teams matched up, it was Oblivion Esports coming out of the gate hot. So can they do it again? I think they were hot out of the gate, if we remember right, last week as well, Bonfire, but ended up throwing that game one. So they've, you know, hopefully they'll learn some lessons since then. Yeah, and I like their composition as well. I think they've got themselves a very strong one. You talked about, you know, that front line of the Nautilus, the Braum, and the Malphite. I was not sure how in the hell Bing Chiller's Fury is able to kill this Azir and the Kai'Sa. And those are two champions that you really need to kill. You know, if there's an Ash or if there is a Diver per se, yes, they do a lot of damage, but you can kind of eat that up. But Kai'Sa and Azir do damage that you just cannot eat up, especially because the front line is strong, but Amumu and Nar are not the tankiest of frontliners. And so even with the Karma Shields, you really have to kill the Kai'Sa and the Azir. So I love Oblivion Esports Ruby's co uh, composition. Um, I will say, because I know you're going to ask me what I think of this game and this series and who's going to win and whatnot, I, I, I feel like I've been correct quite a lot. I, I don't want to pat myself on the back too hard. So um, I think that uh, I think feel I feel pretty confident when I say that this is going to go to three games. Now the question is who wins in three games? Uh, I think I'm gonna have to go Bing Chiller's Fury. Uh, you know, obviously Oblivion Esports Ruby did take the last matchup, um, but 
I, I think that you're coming off of a win like Ben Chiller and Shuri is, and uh, I, I think that means a lot more than uh, than winning a previous matchup in the middle of the season. So I'm gonna go Ben Chillers in three, um, but I do think that Oblivion Esports is gonna make this one difficult, and this game one might even go towards them, because like I said, their composition, very strong. Yeah, uh, I do like the ease of execution um, for the um, Oblivion Esports Ruby side this in this game, but I would uh, I would also mention you know like you said you say how can how can they kill Kais and Azir well? Azir and Kais are both champions that uh, you know sometimes it's like the least you know they have the least syndrome aspect of it where you. Uh, you know, you feel tempted sometimes to go in for that big Azir sack or go in for that, you know, big Kaisa play and you end up getting deleted. So maybe, maybe they'll end up putting themselves in position. We'll have to see um, as we round out this draft. Uh, and actually, even getting a little bit more switch around than I think that uh, we anticipated originally from Bing Chillers, but it makes sense. Looks like Seraphina is going to go down into this bot lane alongside Karma. So they will have those double AP mages mm. or healers, enchanters in the bot lane rather. Um, and then Tristana, more typical to be in the mid lane now. So we'll see how all of that pans out here. But before we go to our break, I do want to shout out coachify.gg, which is our sponsor for Aegis uh, 2023 um, Summer Leagues, even though we're here in September now. Remember that Coachify is a coach commission-free esports coaching platform currently in open beta. You could become a coach today and track your students and inspire them to succeed. Check out the panel located below the stream and you can find out more while you're doing that, we are going to take a break. And when we come back, we will be on to the rift for game number one in the qualification match between Bing Chillers Fury and Oblivion Esports Ruby. We'll be right back.
groomsmen, I ask you, will you follow me tonight to break their spine and reclaim what once was mine? Those cravens backstabbed me, deceived me. Never shall I tolerate their crimes again. Now let the hunt begin. Oh, souls. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to APL where the teams are taking their positions here well, on Summoner's so Rift. And early on, we are seeing some pings coming through on the side of the Bing Chillers. Just making yeah, note of how strong of sport. level of a level one um, they could potentially have um, on the side of Oblivion Esports. But doesn't look like Oblivion Esports is planning to take advantage of that. Perhaps they themselves did not uh, realize that strength, I guess. Yeah, when you've got a Nautilus and a Brom. Or they just don't very, want to fit level very... one. You know, yeah, that's also true. I look, man, this is a it's a do or die matchup. You never want to. You ever play a League of Legends game and uh, you make that mistake of going for something crazy, and it's like your rank up game or something of that sort, and uh, you go down a couple of kills, and your moral just falls off the face of the earth because you're like, oh, it's 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 over. So I'm sure both of these teams playing a little bit safe, playing a little bit concerned, and you know it makes sense, right? You never want to be the team to blink first. You always want to be the uh you always want to put yourself in a good position so neither of these teams are going to take that risky level one like you talked about although i don't disagree with you i think that uh whenever you have a nautilus prom a very very strong invid yeah um and we can see as the junglers start out here it is going to be nautilus starting out solo on those raptors so interested to see about that clear makes sense that he would want to do the raptors first just because the aoe clear um and i mean nautilus jungle is something that we have seen you know we saw in the msi finals we saw kanavi pulling that one out first timing it on the stage and then we also saw g2 in the beginning of the lec try to use it um then it seems like they kind of realized that you know, it was not necessarily worth uh, the extra flex and stop, but here we go. Like you said, ganking is super strong, so I would really like to see Quintic get into one of these lanes early on. You know, not really much point of fa hard farming in the early game as this Nautilus. So especially against a Mumu who, you know, isn't a hard scaling champion either. Yeah, I, honestly, both of these champions are kind of uh, the other side of the coin. They both do a lot of similar things. Their clears are actually fairly similar. <laughs> I was kind of knocking the Nautilus clear, but you look at it, they're both making pretty much the same time. So at least early on, they're both doing about the same in terms of the clear. And uh, they're both very strong in the ganking aspect. So should be some fireworks early in this game, which is very exciting. The, the, the thing you want to see least is... Uh, Two junglers just kind of waiting, tailing, so it should be a lot of fun. But as of right now, obviously they need to get their, they need to get their camps. If we're talking about potential lanes to look to gank towards, it's gonna have to be mid or bot. Nobody is feeling very good about getting a Malphite or a Gnar super far ahead, so I expect to see both of these high ganking junglers in the mid and the bot lane. Yep. Um, and for so just once again recapping the stakes of this matchup here i'm just out here you know trying to fully understand the you know the myths and legends of this format you know so so awesome that you can't even understand it um but so for bing chillers they were a five or six seed so they needed to get two wins um in this qualification stage to make it into the playoffs they picked up the first one last week against con esports z they need to pick up this second win then in the series, uh, second series win um, against Oblivion in order to qualify, whereas Oblivion was a 3-4 seed as Quintic trying to make it happen, so they only need to win one series, and it's going to be a nice oh. flash away from Bwiz not going to land the dredge line is Quintic, despite investing his own flash, needed to be a little bit more patient to make that one happen. So, I guess my point is, a little bit higher of a mountain to climb for Bing Chillers coming into this qualification tournament, but here we are, you know, both teams now at that same point, it's as simple as win or go home as we had mentioned earlier but just kind of explaining the circumstances because again uh unless your name is flay don it's difficult to comprehend these things also you know uh i uh, i work in i work in broadcast television news and the thing that we always talk about is never assume that someone's been here the whole time so true you're just true. joining us well i mean 
If you haven't been here the whole time, you're not my favorite, but I'll accept you <laughs> now, and you should see my favorite. You're more of my favorite than if you came the next time for the first time, so. True. Anyways, we've seen some uh, pretty big training here in these lanes, specifically in the top lane, where we're gonna see Super Chase. He's gonna use the jump over the top here of Saint of Ages, who still does have the flash available, but no mana to speak of, very little HP as well, but this Gnar, does not have the mega um again at least anytime super soon so saint of ages should be able to get it back um move it back to the base teleport back in there for now i mean these bot lanes also fighting quite a bit but with those double enchanters wheeze and tlites or t lights i guess um you know that they're just going to keep uh you know shielding healing shielding healing etc and they're able to sustain through this lane yeah and poking this True. is uh, going yep. against oh. Karma Seraphine. A lot of poke. Ooh. A lot of poke coming across. Uh, Quintic just kind of walking up. Yeah, they just needed... have to shove it out, I suppose, because Karma or uh, yeah. Seraphine had the teleport, so able to teleport back, but they should still be able to freeze this. So it's going to just be pretty annoying um, if you are Raven's Man and Toad Step. Super short range um, on this Braum. Ooh. Nice counter jungling attempt here from JS Chaotic. Oh, he's now gonna find himself getting knocked back by I'm, uh, You Wrong Me Right. And the it's gonna be the Tristana Insect coming through with the buster shot. And JS Chaotic is punished for his attempt to harass Orb Oribot in the jungle there. Now in the top lane, ultimate use here by Super Chase, but Saint of Ages not gonna get knocked under the turret like his teammate. So he's gonna be okay for now, but now Oribot has made his way into the top lane, just level five for this Amumu, who does not have the additional stun. Saint of Ages gonna get him oh. away for now, flash by Oribot to follow. He's gonna take a turret shot for that move, but not even close to dying, and he will be able to walk away. A waste of the flash, though, there by Amumu. No way that Super Chase would have been able to follow it up there, it seems to me. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind it as well. Uh, I do want to talk about that previous fight there with the Tristana. You wrong me right. Recognizing the Azir, flashless, standing in front of the way, so even if the Azir wanted to stream a shuffle his way out of there, uh, was going to run into the Tristana, not really able to do so, and just good recognition, although has to recognize that the Nautilus is here, does have the jump. Mid. Yep. Ooh. Jump available, but now we're going to see the dredge line coming through, and we still have that Sharima shuffle available. Remember, there's no flash on the Tristana because they used it to make the play earlier, and the kill is going to go over to JS Chaotic. And a nice yeah. gank here from Quintic, finally able to make something happen in the kill department. Ping's coming down Almost to the spot lane, so that could be the next point of contention. Almost the uh, the opposite of what had previously happened, you know? Really great work from Quintic, recognizing, hold on, Quintic's here, doesn't want to hook, not, doesn't really know where the Amumu is. Uh, just good recognition, you know, recognizing that the uh, Tristana is flashless, pushing up very far without vision, and uh, even with the uh, even with the jump, just uh, waiting until the Tristana lands back on solid ground and able to take down you wrong me right along with the stream of shuffle like you had mentioned so in the mid lane fairly even is about a 10 cs advantage for you wrong me right the top lane fairly even in terms of gold uh in the jungle fairly even across the board so really there's not any lanes that are too far ahead uh, the most ahead right now is going to be that mid lane uh with the tristana but between both of these teams not even a thousand gold is separating them so Talk about nerves in the final game of the season for these two, or could be potentially the final game of the season for these two. Uh, both of them playing, I, I think, very smart. And it's good to see as well, uh, Elsa, because in the last game that we saw, I think uh, it's not it's not, it's not unfair to say that Oblivion Esports Ruby had some unforced errors. So it, it's, in, it's, it's cool to see that uh, when they're losing out on fights, it, it's not really their own fault. It, it is the uh, strength of the enemy team. Certainly so. Here as Saint of Aegis is going to get Nard backwards. Um, going pretty low. Oh, as the... Going to try to pop, proc that hyper... Proc the hyper is super chase. Excuse me. But even with the CC from the Nard ultimate, it's not enough. And it's a solo kill in the top lane for the Nard. Super chase going to take that advantage for himself. Neither top laner has teleport. Um, so not able to get back. I keep thinking that one of these teams is going to start this dragon up, but so far, um, everybody just being pretty cautious about this one. Bot push definitely going back and forth, which is probably part of the reason why. Um, but we can't see T-Lights trying 
to make me make a play onto toad step here raven's man coming in for the potential assist um gonna provide that target for brahm to jump over to his teammate um, and now the dragon finally will be started up here by the blue side in the Bing Chiller's Fury. Four members strong will take this one uncontested to start off that dragon stacking. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's unfortunate in the top lane for Saint of Aegis. Uh, really, really close to getting that kill right there. And I think the Nart just getting out of tower range, getting a, you, you don't get the assist from the tower and you don't really have the damage. and. That's just unfortunate. I think this uh, Malphite is not going to be happy about that one. Is Orbot has to make sure that he can get away to his to his friends in the bot lane. I think uh, the lore be damned. Orbot does have some friends this game. This uh, this Amumu is feeling very very well represented in the friend department and is able to get back to them, keep himself alive. So it is going to ensure that Super Chase has that lead in the top lane. And like we had talked about, you know, it is kind of just a tank matchup. Obviously, this Nar does have damage, but uh, this is all of the damage that the Mega Nar provides, and it is about one fourth of the uh, Malphite, although it's starting to chunk down now. Yeah, um, Saint of Aegis has his ult up now. It's going to be up. Does he have the CC? But it's going to be Super Chase. No! Not able to find the soul kill oh. of Aegis this time. And it was a matter of milliseconds there. Saint of Aegis getting that unstoppable force in time to provide the CC onto the Gnar. And Super Chase feeling good about that 1v1 until the last moment. Not enough. Um, and so the kill traded back. There's one solo kill apiece. And we kind of remain pretty even on both sides. Uh, Saint of Aegis able to save his TP for now, or um, and it looks like he'll just walk it back up there. Yeah, I, I gotta say, I do like Super Chase going for that because if you win that, you have a 2-0 advantage. And so you start to really get farther ahead than the uh, enemy Malphite. If you lose that, well, it was close. You're obviously not happy about it, but uh, it was close and uh, you basically even up the lane, but I think a one kill advantage is fairly negligible unless you're able to snowball it. And so right there, really good trying to go for it. But on the other side of the coin, Saint of Aegis ensures that the lane gets stabilized just a little bit, still down some CS, but getting that kill is very, very important uh, to stay in this game. If you fall too far behind on the Malphite, obviously you are a tank, so you don't need the most gold in the world. But if you fall too far behind, you are, uh, your tankiness is pretty negligible. So very, very important fight in the top lane. And it does also have ramifications. Saint of Aegis fell low, had to back. And uh, with Super Chase coming back with full health, they were able to take that Rift Herald. Rift Herald uh, picked up and now Quintic looking for this dive, gonna miss the initial Ooh. line. And with the CC coming through, Quintic now having to flash out. Multiple ultimates have been used right off the bat, but now JS Chaotic in a 1v1 against I'm Wrong, You Right. The teleport did come through from Super Chase, so now the, ch um, the chase, the Super Chase to follow here. And with T-Lights continuing to provide the speed up oh, alongside Wheeze, it looks like they might be able to find the win, but actually it's gonna be T-Lights, the first kill of the fight and now Saint of Aegis has arrived. Will Quintic be able to survive this one? Get a root up, please. And it's gonna be a clean two for zero with what started out looking very, very sketchy for Oblivion Esports. Ruby turns out okay in the end. And Super Chase now once again trying to find the 1v1. Actually, it's a 1v2 though, because you a me wrong, you right. He misclicked multiple auto attacks, but even with the bomb procking, it's not enough damage. So flash off of the Trisana for nothing. And Saint of Aegis will be able to walk away. 2K gold lead still in the favor of Bing Chiller's Fury, but that is a nice little bit of action for them down bot. Kaisa also even picking up a kill there as well for Raven's Man. Yeah, very important that they got a kill onto Raven's Man. and. Bing Chiller's Fury, maybe a little bit too furious right there. They had Super Chase, and it was a 3v3 when they were chasing, but honestly, running into a Braum just never feels good, and the teleport secures their death, but even before that teleport, it had really felt like they were losing that fight, so it's just unfortunate for them right there because they, ex they expend the teleport for Super Chase, and they still end up losing two kills to none in the bot lane, and then... Try to get that kill onto Saint of Aegis, but they need to learn that killing this Malphite is probably not going to be an easy endeavor, as you wrong me right. Oh, uh, was not able to find it. 
the scoop trying to get you uh you wrong me right under the turret is js chaotic but it is not successful and now quintic here we got a 2v2 kind of a casual 2v2 between the junglers and mid laners bot lane also trading a little bit but really not too much um damage sticking or coming through um on either side and so with three seconds on the dragon the second one here going to be this hextech dragon we do see both junglers in this area and bing chiller's fury definitely want to continue the stacking as they've dropped the herald in the mid lane it looks like that will finish off the first turret and will also give them a lot of map priority over this river area in the bot lane oh this is great from the azir right Ooh. here hold on a second oh just dead Azir turret or not, you wrong me right, finding the solo kill in the mid lane. Now Quintic that was in the middle of four members trying to clear a ward, but will drop for nothing in return and down their mid laner in the jungler. Nothing that the bot laners can do, but watch here for Raven's Man and Toadstep as the second dragon picked up for Bing Chiller's Fury. They increase their gold lead to almost 3000 and they definitely feel they're being chilling at the moment. Now Oribot, the chilling is over because they want to try to find a kill in this bot lane. Toadstep gonna use the stand behind me to jump away and actually just no ultimate use there from the Mumu. Seems like he was kind of greeting for trying to get it onto Kaisa. Um, but instead they won't they won't find anybody. And I guess Oribot has a different idea about when he wants to use that curse of the sad mummy later on. Yeah, I think uh, kind of saving it. If you use it on the Braum right there, I don't think you get that kill. Um, I mean, it's close, don't get me wrong, but you use the Curse of the Sad Mummy solely on the Braum, and the Kaisa just basically gets to free hit while you're all trying to kill the Braum. And uh, as you saw right there, that fight was very close. So I get it. I understand it. You, you don't want to use it too early on here. Right. And, and, and there's a chance to use it defensively as well, right? If the Kaisa decides to hop in to try to finish somebody off, you do have the Curse of the Sad Mummy to try to negate that. So um, it's like the Blitzcrank hook that you always talk about. Sometimes it's the threat of the Blitzcrank mm -hmm. hook that's actually stronger than the Blitzcrank hook itself. And Curse of the Sad Mummy, not dissimilar to that. So choosing not to use that and. Uh, able to uh, keep his team alive, very important. Across the map, it does feel like Bing Chillers have kind of found their form, uh, have, have been playing very fluid this uh, these last couple of minutes, getting the kill on the Azir mid lane, even with the Azir turret up, just good recognition of you wrong me right. Very good on this Tristana of recognizing when the damage is and uh, when you're able to, you know, have lethal. And, uh, and then obviously getting the kill onto Quintic and the Dragon. So Bing Chillers have, have really found their pace, have really found their form, and it feels like they're just playing very fluid at the moment. But uh, they need to keep that up. They need to keep their foot on the neck of the enemy team because this game is far from over. But even but, but with that fluid play, they've given themselves a bit of breathing room. This game was very close. It felt like both of these teams had not a lot separating them. Now, 3,000. My eyes right now are on you wrong, me right um, on the side of Bing Chiller's Fury. 3 1 and 0. Looks like he's got oh, about 2,600 gold over individually over his lane opponent in JS Chaotic with that static shiv as well as Devori Quick Blade being complete. So, you know, remember we kind of have these two big carries um, on the side of. Um, Oblivion Esports Ruby in JS, you know, in this Azir and Kaisa. So I think you wrong me right. He's set up to be the carry on the other side. Um, and it's a question of will we be able to see that execution coming through? Pretty easy to execute when you got two enchanters on your side. And speaking of that, Bleez is going to be rooting up multiple members of JS Chaotic with a three member scoop here. And the Malphite has arrived as Jay wrong me right is going to go on a killing spree to start the fight. Ooh. Let's see what else they can get done as the Jershana still firing out of this backline. But Raven's Man going to jump himself into the enemy team's backline. And it's a double kill now for the Tristana, we can see the way that the front to back team fighting continues to develop here beautifully for the Bing Chillers Fury. So frustrating to play against these enchanters. Shield, 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 shield. Don't forget the poke and the roots, just like you mentioned earlier. And it's Bing Chillers Fury coming out on top with just one kill traded over onto Bleez. JS Chaotic had such a nice start to that fight, but after that, woo, it went downhill.
Yeah, they're gonna have to kill this Tristana because you wrong me right went absolutely massive in that last fight. We're gonna go to a replay right now just to see this one again. It starts off good, like you had talked about Oblivion Esports Ruby. Not much better than a three-man Sharima shuffle, but that means that you're sacrificing your Azir this entire time that they're going in. You wrong me right is just free hitting. They're not able to kill this Amumu. They're not able to kill the front line, and because of that, you wrong me right is just hopping around looking like a toad in a pond. Pond, getting reset on reset and like you said right this front line if you're not able to kill it and this Tristan is just able to hop around it is going to be absolutely disastrous and Bing Chiller's Fury find the fight of their dreams right there they're able to get the Rift Herald they're able to get three kills or four kills even they only sacrifice one and that 3,000 gold lead that I was talking about has ballooned to five and a half thousand I talked about needing to keep their foot on the neck of their opponents. They are firmly planted on Oblivion Esports' jugular. Yeah, um, and for Oblivion Esports here, even their tankier members, because of the CC provided by these enchanters and by this Amumu, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, we've got multiple um, members here building Merc Treads, uh, despite the fact that they really would like to pick up that armor against the Trisana. But, you know, if you're rooted in place forever, then uh -oh. you won't even have the chance to damage her at all. But Quintic trying to find the moment here onto you, Wrong Me Right, who is needing to use the rocket jump right away, but still has the flash available. Is Raven's oh, no. man sending it, and you wrong me right is gonna get knocked up in CC now, but was not able to use the rocket jump despite the fact that he got the reset there. So that is a huge 1k gold shutdown going over to JS Chaotic, which is the right uh, person for this to go on to. And now Super Chase is here with the Meganar, but does not look like they have the angle to find and engage under this Azir turret, um, at least for now. And so that's a nice bit of momentum taking down You Wrong Me Right. But now, actually, Bing Chiller's Fury, they are not done. They're looking for more here. Is Ori back going to miss the first bandage shots? But remember, he'll have another charge of it up any second now. The second one's going to land on Quintic and then add money onto two members. JS Chaotic still has the ultimate to knock them away. And now Toad Steps still running, running, running. Is this Brom so hard to take down some of these tankier members? Do they have the damage? The answer is no. And we can see kind of the issue here for being at chiller's fury up 4,000 gold but without you wrong me right without their tristana ad carry they lack the damage to finish off these members you know nothing getting traded the other way but it you know we can see why that can be a concern in the case that you lose the tristana yeah, they, uh, they lose to Tristana, and like you said, that is so much of their damage right there. And sure, they still do have damage. You know, you look at Bleez as that number one target with the Leandries. You'd imagine that, you know, the extended fight when they're able to yeah. just get a ton of spells offshore that can chunk them down. But in terms of quick burst damage that they might need, it's all on you, Rami, right? Super Chase, as, a, as an R, just doesn't really do it. It isn't really enough, and you're going to really need that Tristana. And so they're able to get the pick off onto the Tristana, onto You Wrong Me Right. They get the shutdown on You Wrong Me Right as well. I will say, I don't want to call back to mistakes, but it could have been a bit cleaner. Quintech hooked a wall to start that off. And uh, you'd imagine Raven's Man doesn't have to die there if he doesn't hook the wall. So uh, unfortunate right there, but they still do get the kill. They still do get the shutdown, but it was at the cost of a one for one. And even with the shutdown gold, you still don't really love that, especially when you're down this much. You need one for zeros when you're going for those picks. And so maybe not as good as they might have wanted it. Rift Herald is dropped in the bot lane, probably was about to fall. And so they just need to find a lane, an avenue for it to drop into. Uh, they are going to put you wrong me right into the bot lane to push it out I'm a little concerned about them leaving you wrong me right on kind of an island here because you talked about it right this tristana is fairly uh, fairly important and uh really if they wanted to gank this tristana they don't have a ton of vision as you wrong me right Ooh. trying to get some damage across oh he's gonna flash forward trying to pick up that 1v1 kill against easier doesn't get it is able to take down the turret and now will get it to charge onto the next one raven's man potentially trying to look for a play here but now it's the second turret already going down trisana with that 
Bomb able to take these down so quick, and you are on me right. Will trade his life for it, but it's going to be two turrets and an inhibitor traded, and the rest of his team is on the Baron. Now, remember, they don't have the huge DPS, but look at that. As you were saying, Seraphine providing more than enough here as Quintic is going to get over, but it's going to be smited by Amumu, so it will be secured by Bing Chiller's Fear, but now the rest of the fight is going to start. And remember, they don't have the Dristana, but Raven's Man and JS Chaotic, the damage has arrived from Oblivion Esports will they be able to find those members is there going to be a one member scoop please will be pushed back and seraphina eventually surely will drop down here so it's going to be just one traded for the baron they should be able to take down this mid lane turret and pick up an objective bounty in return so it's not all bad um for oblivion esports ruby but they will have that inhibitor down and they will lose the baron as well so the gold lead yeah. continuing to grow here for Baby yeah Chiller's also that is also, that is heartbreaking right there because you talk about a 50-50, had an opportunity right there to not only steal the Baron, but potentially get more right there as Super Chase wants to go in. Toadstep gonna have to burn that flash. Potentially get more as well in the kills department. You saw that without the Tristana in the fights. Yeah, they still have damage on this, uh, on this, uh, uh on the seraphine but uh at the end of the day it's not really enough is it and uh it felt like with that fight once raven's man and js chaotic showed up it was danger 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 for being chillers they're lucky that they got away with that many members and uh they're able to march themselves away now i gotta say i i said this earlier you wrong me right is playing very very aggressive for what is basically the sole carry, sole carry of their team eight on an 80 carry jumping in onto ravens man i mean the, my guy there is a nautilus now they do a vision of them but man that is aggressive yeah, um, and it looks like he's actually going to potentially look for this dive here as ravens man flashing away but it does wow. not matter even ravens also expending the killer instinct and despite that you wrong me right Coming away with the 1v1 kill does not take down the turret, but once again, drawing so much pressure across the map as the rest of the team, the soul um, that is going to secure the dragon soul here. Now it is the Chemtech soul, which, you know, oftentimes considered one of the weaker ones, but Toadstep caught out and there's nowhere for this Braum to go. Things are starting to look rough um, for the side of Oblivion Esports Ruby. They're going to have to find you know continuously more of a miracle it feels like if they want to win this one yeah they're not out of this game yet they still do have scaling on both of their damage carries and ooh, there might be a potential opportunity right okay. here although underneath the tower yeah just yeah, saying they're just going to be clipped there um by the ultimate from wheeze they will be able to pick up the turret um as an additional Prize, but you could see those just couple of ultimate uh, auto attacks by the Azir soldiers. So much damage coming through now that he has just two and a half items completed. Once the Zanyas comes through, a little bit more safety for him um, to go alongside with those damage items. So, yeah, I, I like you. Like I was saying earlier, also like this game isn't you over. Right. He's knocked under the turret. And he is going to find the kill. Gonna actually cancel the turret shot but it's going to be one for one so he's able to trade his life but remember you wrong me right probably the most important member of the team if you are being a chiller's fury super chase has the mega nar available also has that nar ultimate for the moment will he be able to use it stuns three members against the wall and even without that big damage dealer the nar is doing so much work with the cc a double kill for super chases it looks like raven's man will win that 1v1 a little bit too far for super chase but it is super minions crashing into the bot side of the map for Bing chillers and they'll also complete the destruction of the enemy base here taking out the mid lane inhibitor before they take down the top lane turret and probably head out yeah i uh I, I think that they maybe could have gone for an end but js chaotic was about to spawn so they choose to take the business decision probably the correct decision at the end of the day they're playing this one just beautifully i i, I do think that uh they recognize that there's a bit of a timer 
You know, they still do scale, don't get me wrong, but whenever you're going against an Azir and a Kai'Sa, you, you can't go too late, or those two will just absolutely blow up the front line as well as the back line. And I love how they're pushing the advantage in every single fight. Gotta give credit over to you, Ron, me right? This might be the craziest mid laner I've ever seen. Just uh, always hopping in. And uh, like you said, the most important member on the team, probably the most important member on Summoner's Rift, if we're being honest more than double the kills of anybody else uh, in the rest of the game. And so uh, if this Tristana falls, it, it could be disaster. But uh, yeah, I, I think at this point, may have walked up too far. He's in a 1v2. He is going to have the rocket jump utilized there. JS Chaotic, he has the Zanyas now to give himself the time that he needs and that's gonna be a one for zero so you wrong me right finally a play that gets nothing in return and now Super Chase looking for his own play in the top side will have Toadstep coming up to dissuade him but I mean that's actually pretty huge as far as buying some space on the map here and some time to farm for these carries on the side of a Bolivian esports um, and Wits End coming through here for the Kaisa. Interesting choice. Uh, not one that I feel like we see a ton on Kaisa, but just trying to add some of that on hit damage to cut through all of these shields and heals as well as these tankier members. Baron setup now. Yeah, uh, Super Chase should be able to get out. This is the, uh, this is the trade of You Wrong Me Right. Crazy, crazy mid laner, always going in, always looking for opportunities to get kills, but hops a little bit too far right there and gets scooped up in the stream of shuffle. Yeah, and he has teleported back in now and the Baron is just gonna be gone. There's not even gonna be a chance to contest it here um, if you are Oblivion and now Quintic could be the first one under a little bit of pressure there, but it is going to be um, built teams retreating two safety for now baron just for the cost of the teleport by you wrong me right it was an objective bounty picked up in the bottom lane by js chaotic um but that's not going to be an equal trade of gold here and we'll see what else the chillers can do with this baron buff yeah at this point that might be the nail in the coffin because they can uh they can march up waves they can continuously push in super minions and then look at the timer one minute on the uh on the elder so you kind of need to be concerned right about uh about the dragon but also your base is going to be in absolute tatters and you're just not really going to have the vision you might want so as a whole going to be difficult at this point although take for chase good. going mega does he have the flash to get over the wall yes he will be able to stay safe for now getting the shield from the karma how long will he be, oh, no. it's gonna be the shutdown coming through and now the rest of the fight breaks out and you wrong me right it's not a dropped. and it's going to be still js chaotic alive as far as the carries on the other side as raven's man was traded back so overall two for one it does favor oblivion but their base should be under siege after not too long here but 12 seconds crucially until this elder dragon is up you wrong me right does not have the teleport to join so it's going to be all about the potential smite steal here from oribot and the poke um by oh, also, these yeah. channers also, there's just no way they can take it in their face with their health bars. The waves are continuously getting pushed in. They just have to yes. wait for Tristana. They just have to wait for the Tristana right now. I, I don't know. This one's going to be hard. 10 seconds for you wrong me right to come out of the base. And now Quintic is going to be the first one that is focused by Oribot because that's the member with the smite. Look at this Elder Dragon. It's down to 4K. But now the fight is going to commence. It looks like they're going to stop hitting it for now as Weez is putting out the damage. And it was not the call to start the Elder Dragon here. It's gonna be secured up by Bing Chiller's Fury. So even though it was looking so sketchy for them, after that last fight, Bleeze is gonna teleport into the base. You wrong me right, running it up mid in the best kind of way. And I think that Bing Chiller's Fury should be able to find game one here and take the lead. Their road to the playoffs continues to be paved with the blood of these other teams in the APL, but Oblivion Esports Ruby, they might be bleeding, but they're not dead yet. Yeah, we don't know who to they, call uh, the ambulance for quite yet. 
they uh they, they they did what they needed to do near the end like i said the scaling was starting to show up there and Etristana, very very strong but consistently hopping into their death near the end was almost the doom of them but they kept uh, the bot lane alive and who knew that uh, it was actually going to be the seraphine and the karma that kept their their game alive right there and yeah like you said trying to take the the, the elder right in the face of two poke champions it's just too difficult, right? You're just consistently getting poked down, losing health. And uh, once the Amumu hopped in, was able to, you know, push them away from the Elder Dragon and uh, wait for Super Chase to show up. And that was just enough near the end. And so it is going to be the Bing Chillers, the fury of the Bing Chillers, winning that first game, a fantastic game from You Wrong Me Right, even with some mishaps near the end, a, a very strong performance from the Tristana in terms of the damage and uh, the rest of the team just kind of supporting their uh, their carries behind them. I, I was really impressed by so many members. Uh, and for OER, you know, they've been in this position before in their last series, you know, falling behind. They're, they fell 2-0 fashion last time. They cannot do this here. They need to find some resolve that they never knew that they had. They need to reach deep into their souls and uh, and find some strength because if they do not, this series is over and their season is over. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you said it. You said it. It's all on the line here. How deep will Oblivion Esports be able to reach down into themselves? I don't know. We'll, none of us will know until we come back um, in just a couple of minutes. It's do or die. Winner goes to the playoffs. Loser goes home. Will Bing Chillers be able to finish it out in two? I know they would like to. We'll find out when we come back in just a few moments. See you then.
Hello, everyone, and we are back. Well, we prepare here to get into the draft for game two of Bing Chillers Fury um, going up against Oblivion Esports. Of course, Bing Chillers chilling through the first game. They pick up the win, and they are going to be right back onto the blue side, it looks like, here in game number two. Um, so the side was not the issue. Uh, Oblivion has decided and said it is, you know, something else. Um, I would assume champion picks or execution. That's that's a, just about all that's left. Yeah, I, I think uh, I don't mind not not choosing to switch sides. Um, I do think having first pick is very strong, but I I, I didn't hate their, their their counter picks to it and giving up the Tristana didn't really feel like a death wish. It uh it just comes down to execution and it, it did feel like they. Uh, weren't able to execute on a couple of fights, but they are going to ban out the Tristana. So even with uh, even with all that happening, they are going to ban out the Tristana, which is going to leave either the Gragas or the Jarvan open. The last two bans they had in the previous game, and uh, it is going to leave that Gragas open. So Gragas is still available. Interesting to see if Bing Chillers decides to go the way of the fat drunk man. Yeah, uh, that will be one of the changes here, uh, the change coming through here in the draft. So, Bing Chillers, do they value that Gragas pick? Um, instead, it will be the Seraphine being at least hovered here, and it will be locked in here for the Chillers. So, you know, I mean, I think last game, you oh. wronged me right. It was really easy to visually see, um, you know, how much that Tristana was doing, but it was really that Karma and the Seraphine in the back line providing you know that extra push in those longer team fights that mattered the most according to bing chillers obviously tristana banned so they couldn't get that one even if they wanted uh, but for oblivion here they are going to pick up something a little bit different and it's the zigs here could it go down into the bot lane against the seraphine or the mid lane and it's going to be karma taken away so no karma and seraphine combination for the bing chillers this time they'll have to find something else for the bot lane or put that seraphine somewhere else entirely yeah first picking the seraphine is very interesting to me because it, you know i think the seraphine had its strengths but it didn't really feel like it was ever in danger of being stolen away uh so they do end up picking up the seraphine uh, on the other side of things I, i'm happy with the ziggs karma I, I do think that the poke there is just going to be very very annoying to have to deal with and ziggs has been honestly a mainstay over the last couple of months since it first saw action in the lcs 
um, just a very, very strong uh, mid laner, you know, able to scale up, able to do good poke damage, and able to just absolutely decimate turrets. And so it is going to be the Ziggs. On the other side of things, Gragas is going to be picked up along with, and this is where the question marks really start to get, start, start to occur, the Mordekaiser. I'm a little confused there because there's just absolutely no way the Mordekaiser was getting banned. At least you don't think so, especially with the Seraphine and the Gragas being picked up. Probably could have had the Mordekaiser later. They pick it now, and because of that, gonna get counterpicked with the Olaf. Yeah, um, I do wonder, maybe it was a takeaway pick here from Bing, by Bing Chillers because they did ban it in the second phase last time, and we can see Saint of Ages did play it in the first series um, that these two teams played against each other. Um, so it will be the Bing Chillers taking that one, but yeah, like you said, Olaf is going to be the answer. I mean, Olaf also can be played in the, the jungle. Thought, it, you know, we think about that a lot, but um, more, more in the top line, I feel like these days, and especially the fact that they picked it right afterwards would indicate to me that that, that could be the case um, but we are going to see the bands start to fly through here in the second round thresh taken away by oblivion we'll see you know what's taken away on the other side i guess as far as these flex picks though for bing chillers i mean which all of them technically are flex picks gragas we've seen played in the mid lane and the jungler for jungle for bing chillers but actually not by Oribot in the jungle um only by demon um looks like he was the jungler for the first uh for sort of a spot for a bit of the middle of the season here for oblivion uh or rather for being chillers excuse me so um i think gragas probably gonna go to the mid lane um but we'll see you know yeah we'll just have to see seraphine on the other hand it has been flexed between three different roles played in three different roles here for being chillers in the mid support and uh 80 carry so they are truly able to exercise the full extent of that pick yeah, it is going to be the Amumu band out from Oblivion Esports. So two respect bands given over. I think it is probably going to be an Olaf top. Um, you know, it has found its most strength there in the top lane. Um, also, uh, I think just does really well into the Mordekaiser. Uh, you know, able to have Ragnarok and uh, you really just eat this Mordekaiser alive. So I, I do think I love this Olaf pick as a counter. I'm not... I, not mad at the Ivern either. The, I mean, this Olaf is going to be near unkillable with Karma and Ivern shields. And so you, if you're being chillers, you really are going to have to figure this one out because when this Olaf starts running at you, who's going to stop it at the moment? I don't really think they have any strong options. And so they need to figure out how they're going to want to keep this Olaf off. LeBlanc being picked up. Okay. I'm going to be honest right now. I, I just do not like this Bing Chiller's composition. The misfortune's going to be finished off. I, I don't know. I, 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 it's just all over the place. It's very AP heavy. Um, there's poke. There's assassins. There's some tankiness. I, I just... There's not really any ease of execution. I, I, I think that... Uh, Barring a very strange last pick, Oblivion Esports, I think, just has a much better draft. Yeah, I mean, should be. I mean, you know, I could see a couple things here. I mean, definitely got that ultimate synergy between the MF and the Seraphine. If you can land the Encore on top of that MF ultimate, you can definitely do some damage. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely some interesting choices. Lucian going to be the last lock in here for Oblivion Esports, so presumably down into the bot lane. Um, but, you know, that also could be flexible as well. Um, and I guess, yeah, a lot of AP, um, definitely for Bing Chillers. I will say Def LeBlanc still builds Static Shiv usually as the first item. And I've definitely I've seen some weird looking at leblanc builds recently so i'm excited to see um you wrong me right you know we saw kind of that chaotic energy out of him last game um and excited to see that on the leblanc which is definitely another pick that has a lot of agency we'll say to jump all around and you know do whatever you want especially when you get some resources in your hands yeah, I will say, speaking on this Lucian pick just a little bit, I love it. I think it's uh, it's what you need, right? You don't need anything too crazy. You don't need to go too wild, you know, off the walls. If you're Oblivion Esports, you just need some consistent damage and some almost assassin-type assassin damage. You know, this Olaf is going to be eating up quite a lot of 
uh, of importance in these team fights and so with this Lucian you're just focused on uh, maybe trying to assassinate a misfortune or a, or a seraphine or something of that sort so and also you don't want to get this misfortune ahead that would be a disaster so ensuring that you have a good uh, a good self-sufficient bot lane is probably top of their priorities and I think they've done that so I gotta say, you know, and it obviously it does not translate to a win or a loss, but just in terms of a draft difference, I think Oblivion Esports Ruby have hit it out of the park. I, I think they have a great draft, and uh, I think that Bing Chillers are really gonna find themselves struggling when it comes to dealing with this Olaf. They're gonna need to get out early before Ragnarok and try to set this Olaf behind, because if this Olaf has any form of lead, or it genuinely is even, is even at all going into the mid game, I just think that it's good for one, maybe two or three kills in any given team fight with Karma shields and Ivern shields. It's just going to be very, very difficult to deal with this Olaf. Yeah, um, I'm excited to see the top lane matchup go down. Last time we had the Malphite and it still was an action packed matchup. Um, so. Certainly, it seems that this time, um, with that Olaf being the choice in the top lane for Saint of Aegis, we'll probably get a little bit more action. But as things look now, uh, Bonfire, Super Chase holding on to the Gragas in the top lane with Oribot putting the Mordekaiser in the jungle. So will that still be the case here? Because that definitely alters the Olaf's reality a little bit there. Yeah, I, I do think that is the only opportunity right there. Um, but it should be an interesting game across the board. And I think this Mordekaiser kind of, when you look at the pick away from the Olaf, uh, could be very strong. You know, there's a lot of uh, champions that you, you really would just absolutely demolish when you, you know, bring them to the Shadow Realm. And so that could be a potential opportunity for this Mordekaiser to really get involved in this game. I think this LeBlanc could do some good poke damage uh, onto a Ziggs or a Lucian. I just, I get, my eyes just keep wandering over to the Karma and the Ivern, and uh, the, the, just the shielding that those two provide, and uh, I think that's gonna really be the, the difference maker in this game. Yeah, we saw on the other side, you know, the Seraphine and Karma game one um, for Bing Chillers was so annoying, so difficult to deal with, so their own version of it here um, in game number two for Oblivion Esports. And yeah, I mean, we, we also think about the strength of that Olaf alongside the Karma um, and the Ivern as well. Just sounds very, very scary running all up into that back line on top of the misfortune and yeah i mean unless we see any trades coming through after this last pick it looks like it will be lucian locked in as the mid laner lucian into leblanc you know uh in metas of long you know of long past times this was definitely a bit mid lane matchup that we we saw there's a lot of skill in this matchup for sure um yeah and so you wrong me right want would you know really flexed i feel like in lane um in that first game i can remember early on with that um tristana insect play with the buster shot so probably some revenge um is it you know would be in order in your brain at least if you're js chaotic so hoping to see yeah. that here hoping for a lot of action remember it's do or die this could be oblivion esports ruby's last game in the apl if they don't take it home so grab your snack of choice grab your beverage and popcorn and be right back after this spectator delay because we're going to be on the rift for game number two potentially our last game in a best of three match here in the apl before we hit the playoffs so you don't want to miss it be right back
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Aegis Protectors League as we're in the second welcome round of Summer's our qualifying League. stage here to find out who will make it into the big day and the playoffs to determine the team that will win all the glory here in this score. league. Um, and well, for now, level one, not much going on. Is it all the glory? It's the ability to make it into playoffs. So, the, well, I meant that and the playoffs will determine who wins all the glory. Ah, uh, I see. I see. You, yeah, you have. You only have a chance to even be in the running if you win this. So. That's true. Now these two teams. They, they, look, they just both want an opportunity, and that's what it comes down to, is playoffs is a whole different atmosphere, and, uh, you know, anything can really happen in the playoffs. So both of these teams want to be a part of that. question is whether they will or will not be able to. Also, if you avert your eyes to the left side of your screen, yeah, that's a Mordekaiser jungle. <laughs> you uh, are seeing that correctly, and that is a Gragas top. Why? I don't know. Um, they believe in it. Also, that is a Lucian mid and a Zig spot. So just goes to show that this league, nothing okay, makes sense. Everything baby. is confusing. Level one here, Saint of Aegis. Going to be able to get that trade that you know Olaf loves. Able to use that undertow again and again with the reset. So nice trade, Super Chase, though. He is able to walk it out um, as much as he can there. Yeah, um, but ends up missing out. Ends up of... missing out on the minions. So uh, even with the the health trade, you are very much favoring Saint of Aegis there. Those first three minions, incredibly important. Yeah, on um, a JS Chaotic early level two, a nice trade there using the press the attack. And I mean, yeah, for Super Chase, they flex the Gragas. So, you know, it's not necessarily the matchup that Saint of Aegis was thinking about when they picked the Olaf. But remember, Gragas was still picked up at that point in the first round as well. So, you know, that could have definitely been on the radar of Oblivion Esports and for Super Chase here. You know, yes, Gragas does have some ability to CC Olaf up early on, but once he has his ultimate available, you got to make sure as Gragas, you don't want to throw that cask or use the body slam onto him during that time when he's CC immune because, you know, the damage will still come through, but the rest of it is pretty worthless. So Saint of Ages, how much mastery does he have on this Olaf? You know, that the players who know what they're doing with this um can really make things happen as super chase here he is going to be feeling still pretty healthy um even though he does fall down really far in the cs and they'll first whoa 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 wow he lights getting really low has to use the heal yeah this is uh this is a very very annoying poke lane to have to go into and uh they are just <laughs> struggling right now uh very much on the struggle bus with the current state of things in the top lane super chase struggling as well just getting cs but in the bot lane it is uh it is just they're finding it difficult to hold no why would you do that he runs under the turret and it is gonna be uh yeah that's it yeah yeah uh yeah 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 i mean look Crazy you're an all off Oh God, Quintic, please do not try to go for this. Okay, Quintic is not going he to. He traded the well, flash, it was fine. Yeah, was fine. I think, That's well, great. I will try to provide, I will try to provide devil's advocate here and I will speak on their behalf. Probably, you know, trying to get that lead ahead on an Olaf and, you know, early game Olaf, very strong. You want to try to find yourself advantages that way. But uh, I think you are correct in your dismay because like you said, you have the CS advantage. You're just continuously shoving waves and uh, choking this Gragas out, and you're sure to get another opportunity. And yeah, that's just kind of a disaster because now you're down gold. Even if you get a kill, you're just basically evening things out, and that early Olaf advantage not going to be as strong as it could be. No, certainly not. I mean, yeah, and I think Saint of Ages probably you're okay going one for one there, which is why he's diving under to begin with. Again, like you said, to play a little bit of devil's advocate when it doesn't work out. It does not look pretty at all. 
Um, and Toadstep just continuing to be relentless, holding on to that Ignite. Possibly could have been close to lethal damage there, um, but you know, possibly not as well. But either way, T-Lights having to go back to the base. Not a huge CS lead manifested um, so far, but now with this wave crashing into the turret, it will be a few lost here for Buiz, who was able to pick up the Serrated Dirk. So that is the item that you want to be able to grab on your first back um, as MF. Um, and so it's not all bad, but definitely not the most fun lane to play for sure um, if you yep. are being chillers here. Yeah, Bing Chillers are finding it difficult to do anything really at the moment. This MF needs to be early close range. I mean, it does have some range, but as a whole, you know, it is going to get outranged by a Karma and a Ziggs. And just finding it difficult to do that early MF damage. And uh, I'm a fan of how Raven's Man and Toadstep have been playing out this bot lane. We, you know, we've spoken highly about Raven's Man in the past. You know, in their last series, I think was probably the brightest point and a pretty disappointing loss for the team. And uh, in game one, still wasn't that bad. I, I think definitely could have had more of an impact on the Kaisa, but... Okay, Super Chase in the top lane. Does he have the kill damage? One more auto ejection. Do it, baby! And it's a solo kill for the Gragas. He set up the ultimate. He had the barrel, his Q cooking in the bush there. Knocked him back, knowing that he had that level 5 to 6 advantage. But now here in the spot lane, you were talking about it. Raven's Man and Toadstep, they are a little bit under attack, but they're able to back off there. And oh, Saint of Aegis, you can just see how... Um, you know, these advantages and disadvantages snowball in this game of League of Legends and what was originally a winning matchup with so many upsides now be starts to become difficult for this Olaf. Once it gets to level six, it'll be a little easier, but without that, it enabled the kill. Yeah, uh, also the Olaf rushed Merc Treads. <laughs> I, uh, concerned about the poke of the Gragas, but that is going to greatly push you back in terms of the damage you can do early. You wrong me right, is gonna have to flash away as the Culling comes through here doing a lot of damage from Lucian. He knew that Quintic was there. So now T-Lights though, flashing forward, uses the heal to keep himself alive. Has Toadstep gone through too far as Buiz is gonna flash forward himself. And at the end of the day, it's a one for 2 advantage over to the side of Oblivion Esports Ruby as both kills are gonna picked up by be picked up by Toadstep on the Karma. So you would have liked it to go on to the Ziggs, um, but nevertheless, Ziggs will be able to shove this one out. But waiting in the bush here is Oribot. No level six though for the Mordekaiser. So it doesn't look like he'll have enough damage. But in the top lane, we're gonna see Super Chase under attack by Quintic. Uh, no Daisy drop though, as they don't feel confident enough going under that turret. Not gonna make that mistake twice at least at this point in the game. And instead they will take the Rift Herald as their consolation prize. It looks like Dragon and Rift Herald are probably gonna be traded across for both teams. Yeah, I think uh, Oribot has not really gotten out on the map as much as I'm sure the, uh, the Mordekaiser might want to, but does take some time for this Mordekaiser to really feel comfortable walking around and the ganks just aren't that strong on a Mordekaiser jungle. And so feels more comfortable taking objectives, getting CS, Doing a pretty good job in that regard, even with the Ivern. Quintic also hasn't really gotten out quite a bit, but both teams has just been a lot of lane fighting. Uh, I think both of these teams really find their, they think that their strength comes through that. And so far we've seen that sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I, I will say Super Chase, if you look at the itemization, it is gonna be a Rod of Ages. So the Roa, the AP damage, along with the innate tankiness that it gives you, Trying to keep this uh, this Gragas alive. KS Chaotic, where are you, my friend? He's gonna be against the wall there on the wrong side of the map. And you wrong me right. Picking up the kill, it looks like he was able to get the assist over to Ori, but I didn't see what landed there, if anything. But now, as we go into the top lane here, Oribot has popped the ghost has the level six to bring saint of ages into the death realm i believe he can cleanse it with his ultimate but either that's not the case or he's just choosing not to use it as um he's gonna be safe under his tower so kind of a bummer there for oribot not able to land that death realm um in range to keep him out of the turret um but saint of ages just continuing to get i guess you know 
bull I, I mean i don't want to say necessarily bullied obviously up two kills is gragas but still a cs advantage for saint of ages but most importantly just not able to make a difference um even though they put so much draft stock into this olaf early on yeah uh the olaf's done fine don't get me wrong you know you're 72 cs you're never you know that mad about a 20 cs advantage but like you said, you'd expect the kills to come alongside it. Hold on. Of Aegis. Okay, it's Ragnarok time here. As Super Chase will be able to get himself under the turret to safety and also with the passive should be able to, you know, slowly heal himself up. Does have the barrel. Um, explosive cask is available if Saint of Aegis comes back to lane. Uh, but in the mid lane now, it will be the Rift Herald drop down by Quintic. And he is gonna charge and get them some plating. Uh, but they won't be able to follow it up further after that. Ooh, Super Chase could look to knock him under the turret here. Yeah, Super Chase knows that the Ragnarok is down. Is taking some damage. Uh, you know, that's the poke that uh, the Olaf provides. I think kind of an underrated part of the kit. Those axes will just whittle you down, but as of right now, not really lethal on either member, and so they're both feeling fairly safe. Uh, we haven't really talked about the mid lane that much, Elsa, and that's because not a lot has been happening. JS Chaotic has gotten the plates, but uh, the kill has gone over to you, wrong me, right? And so I think we can look at the gold right now really quick. Uh, I, I think that it's yeah. fairly even. And it's indeed, really close. It's about 10 gold. Actually, it's three gold off, four gold off. Really yeah, very massive close. gold difference. Massive gold yeah. difference between these two. Uh, yeah, not a lot separating these two mid laners. Uh, in the bot lane, kind of the same thing, only about 100. Ooh, Raven a lot of this is gold. Hold on. Here. Ultimate has not even come through from the MF yet. Now the bullet time going to fire. Shut down. Ooh, as Bleez, does he end up dying? No, he went back into the Karma Q. Second half of the Empowered Karma Q, but ends up getting away. You wrong me right. Trying to green for this cannon minion as JS Chaotic just gets himself in between those two turrets, dropping the aggro wall chain. So lucky there. Oh, as JS Chaotic, oh the minions have run out. You wrong me right lands the second mostly turret related uh solo kill for the bing chillers and there's something about running under turrets today that seems uh appealing if you are a member of oblivion esports ruby but now super chase flashing forward onto quintic using the explosive cast oribot for the second time death realming someone under the top lane turret um, and Daisy will fall, but Quintic will not. Should just be able to walk away for now. Oh no, you wrong me right now. Flashing forward, landing the chain. And he is gonna find the kill. And now it is Saint of Aegis stuck between a rock and a hard place, except he's actually looking pretty tanky here, but there's three members. It seems like it's just a matter of time. Oh, no, Maybe, but Oribot's really low now. You wrong me right, going to miss the first chain. Unfortunately, he's kind of ridiculously tanky on the Blanc, having built Shadow Flame first item. And it's four zero and zero. Here we are again. You wrong me right. Different champions, same story as the mid laner of Bing Chillers Fury uh, set up to carry here in this qualifying series to the playoffs for this team. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't pick favorites, Elsa. But you wrong me right. Is quickly. Getting on my list is one of my favorite players to watch. This guy is an absolute menace, or I should say this person. Great name, you know, you know, by the way. Women, Great women, name. women should Shout play out League of Legends. Name. Shout out the name, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, this How person not love it? is uh, is unbelievable. Just just yeah. hopping under powers and playing crazy. And uh, look, you love to see it, right? It's the way that uh, the mid lane is, I think in my eyes, supposed to be played, at least with the champions, the way that they're playing them. And, there's no reason to play safe when you're going LeBlanc Tristan. So I, I I love the way that they're playing the game. Just so fun to watch and it's paying dividends as well. It's not just int, it's not just uh, bad for the bad sake of it. They are playing crazy and it is working out. Yeah, it's always fun to see champions with a high level of skill expression have skill expressed in their play. And I definitely think that that is what we are seeing so far i mean definitely you know as i mentioned last game huge amount of support coming through from those enchanters that cannot be underestimated on the trisana but this time you wrong me right really kind of doing his own thing here on the leblanc navigating his way into a weird solo kill earlier and then you know finding that other advantage when that turret in the mid lane was just about fallen but not quite 
Um, and checking in on the overall gold lead, it is 800 gold in the favor of the Bing Chillers. And that actually has shifted from almost a 1,000 gold lead um, at one point earlier on in the other direction. Um, so a nice swing for them here um, as they do have two dragons also quietly stacked up as well. Remember last game they had the, um, the soul so that, you know, did big things for them. This time it's the mountain soul. Oh, is JS chaotic getting himself under the turret, but really, really low. He should have to leave. Probably doesn't have teleport available either. Yeah, you wrong me right. If you if we saw the gold graph right there, he's actually down in gold to the yeah. Lucian. That's what the first turret's down. gonna do. But uh, it, it doesn't matter because if you're able to get the poke off, that's really where the strength of the champion comes in. And right there, you saw how strong this LeBlanc could be, even though, you know, is being kept up well by JS Chaotic. It's the strength of the burst. And uh, look at how much respect they're giving this LeBlanc. I mean, just able to zone off basically half the enemy team because of the concern that the poke could provide. And you wrong me, right? Worth their weight in gold right now. Worth their weight in uh, in many things. And uh, it does ensure that they're able to get the Rift Herald for the team. So, so far, very impressed with you, Romy, right? Super Chase also held their own on this uh, on this Gragas against the Olaf. I think uh, if you're a fan of this squad, you feel pretty happy. You're feeling pretty good. All the big chillers, pretty happy with how the thing, the way things are going at the moment. Yeah, um, and let it be. Uh, I mean, I guess I don't know. I, I uh, let it be a PSA that Hex Drinker first item is. Probably not the best. Although I was, I say that while thinking probably Lucian would have died um, in that one v one earlier if he did not have the hex drinker. But you know, having indexed into that specifically again, um, you know, for LeBlanc. I mean, there are other AP damage sources, but you know, as in the lane phase, um, you know, not really allowing him to dominate still. Um, so yeah, uh, or about or about playing bodyguard in the uh, in the mid lane, just uh, making sure that JS Chaotic can do nothing about this tower to take. And you know uh, yeah, Quintex here, but little... it's a two v two now. But actually, now it's going to be a one v one in the death realm instead. As Quintex is going to have to flash himself over to safety, but now out of the death realm, and you wrong me right, trying to make something happen does not have quite enough damage. So it's just gonna be the one summoner expanded. Actually, Ghost also, it looks like, was used for Ori Bot. Nobody going down, the other than the turret, um, which did fall earlier, as you said. And yeah, I mean, we have reached this mid-game point where both teams trying to farm out, both teams trying to get item and gold onto their carries. And if you're being chillers, you're sitting in a pretty nice spot in that regard. 4-0-0 for this LeBlanc, 2-1-1 on the mf as well both of those champions with an item completed so yeah i mean i guess for for oblivion esports we've seen them sort of taper off in these games i think last week we saw the same kind of thing as well as the game goes on and they start to lose they kind of let it continue to happen it feels like so how can they turn this one around is what we'll have to find out you know if they're going to stay in the playoff race i guess we won't necessarily find it out if they don't turn around yeah, I, I think that uh, they need to dig deep like I was talking about. They haven't really gotten the strength out of the Olaf that I'm sure they would have wanted. Only two kills on their squad, both of them in the Karma's pockets. Never feels good, but they definitely do have, you know, the strength and the team comp to still make waves. I think we talked about in the uh, drafting phase that uh, you have to be concerned about an Olaf along with uh, two shielding champions. And so that is where a lot of their strength is going to come in. They don't have bad poke either, and we're starting to see both of those. Yeah, 30 seconds on the dragon. It would be the soul, uh, get soul point. Oh, oh the other four there is gonna be absolutely beautiful from T-Lights. Couldn't have put it in a better place if you tried. And another kill coming through on a JS Chaotic Solution. And I hate to say it, Bonfire, but you know, I just mentioned how it feels like Oblivion gets a little bit complacent in these situations, and it definitely felt like it there as Raven's Man in a 1v1 against You Wrong Me Right. You Wrong Me Right can't seem to land anything, and he just says, screw it. I'm going back to the dragon instead. You can keep your life, Ziggs, but you cannot keep any other control of the map. Yeah, and that's a beautiful play right there. It really comes down to T-Lights. Getting that massive ultimate off, and the rest Ooh. of the damage just comes easy. There's another route onto Saint of Aegis. This Olaf 
a little bit late to the party. Everybody already saying their goodbyes. Has to be happy with maybe one drink and then a long car ride home, and that's exactly what it is. This Olaf, we talk so much about the strength that it could provide. I think disappointing would be a word to, to use here, because right now it just hasn't felt like this Olaf has done nearly enough, and I don't want to put all of the blame onto Saint of Aegis. You know, there, there's an entire team playing right here, but uh, when they when they created this team comp for this Olaf, it feels like there's just not enough. Super Chase trying to make a play there using the explosive cast to knock Raven's Man back, but Raven's Man does, ha does have the flash to get himself alive. And everybody else just running for the hills then afterwards as the pursuit coming through. But now Oribot has popped the ghost, putting Raven's Man into the death realm. How long will this Ziggs be able to survive? Quite some time, as it looks like Oribot will not be able to find this kill. And that's gonna be the first notable overstretch for being chillers in this game who have been very disciplined so far. And for Oblivion, they don't want to miss a beat here. They wanna turn this into a Baron. No jungler on There's the no side way. of Bing Chillers, but I don't know, Bonfire. Yeah. Yeah, this is, and this could be a disaster too if they decide to fight this. I, I think this could be a huge, huge overstep. You get the first pick, that's great, but there's not anything you could really do with it. They recognize that they, they probably make the correct business decision to walk away. If they take this yeah. fight, even though it is a 4v5, you're going into four ultimates or three ultimates. I guess Super Chase did not have the the, the casket, but uh, as a whole, just very, very difficult to uh, potentially do something. There you run me right, it's gonna see, what is that? Five members all backing at the same time. So we don't oh finish their back in a My oh. goodness. You wrong me right, doing so much damage, actually not actually finishing any of these kills um, with the 10 stacks on the Magi's notably. I was talking about some old static ship LeBlanc. It's good old fashioned AP LeBlanc up in here. Shadow Flame first item. I mean, that's not necessarily old fashioned, but other than that, um, still just sitting on the lost chapter as you wrong me right says, who needs the finished um, mythic item when you got uh, Magi's uh, Soul Stealer, right? Yeah, I, and that's scary. I mean, that's very scary. This is a LeBlanc without Ludens, and Ludens is kind of the bread and butter of LeBlanc, you normally think. You know, it, it is the quintessential uh, burst damage AP item, and so without Ludens still able to do this much damage, kind of concerning. Kind of concerning. I, it's not going to be fun having to go into this LeBlanc. It's only going to get worse. So you wrong me right. Making a very, very good case on a potential MVP series right now. And honestly, has played these fights, this game, this series near perfect. Uh, other than a couple of blunders last game on the Tristana overstepping, uh, it does feel like you wrong me right. Just consistently always on the gas pedal and all gas, no brakes tonight. All gas, no brakes. Absolutely. Uh, we'll see if the brakes get put on or not. But I mean, I think one difference here to Bonfire is last game we felt like, you know, you wrong me right was popping off. At the end of the day, his team was able to get it done without him, but it felt like the Tristana was really what was necessary to run everybody around the map. But this game, there's a lot going on beyond just the LeBlanc, but Super Chase here, Super Chase coming from, oh. from the side of Oblivion Esports and this Greg is able to survive for a shutdown. long, long time, but eventually it will be the shutdown picked up by JS Chaotic. Nothing in particular able to be traded back on the other side. So, you know, again, kind of in opposition to when we saw me, you wrong me right on the split push last time and we saw the team trading on the other half of the map. That isn't a possibility this time. And now these chases do start to come through as we can see at least the attempts by Quintech to get these shields on the Saint of Aegis and speed them up into the back line. Just uh -oh. nothing to really fight over at the moment. You wrong me right. He's got a lot of jumps. Got a feeling he's probably going to yeah. be all right for now. Yeah, good recognition. I think you can all you can run down a LeBlanc, but it is difficult. And just good recognition. No reason to be there, uh, especially with the dragon in 30 seconds. Now, this is a mountain soul, um, which, you know, short little tangent, in my opinion, the strongest soul. I, I understand that some provide other things, but I just want a shield. You know, I just want a shield at all points in time. And so a mountain soul would be pretty massive for the side of being chillers. 
and uh, and so they're gonna try to get this. This is our first 5v5 I think we're really seeing. This could be the series right now, Elsa. I, I don't want to get all doomsday on you, but this could be it for Oblivion Esports, really. It's now or never, but Sane of Ages, he wants to find his moment as he pops the Ragnarok, but where is the rest of the team? Not currently yeah. available as the Spectate going crazy and everybody's gonna walk out of the MF Ultimate, but it's because they're really low on health. And now Sane of Ages pulled into the Death Realm and it's gonna be Wheeze taking the last hit the second he comes out. Now the explosive cast comes true from Sir, um, yeah. Super Chase to blow up the entire fight it's a double kill from ori bot it's quintic gonna be the last one to go down to please it's an ace five four just one in return only the support falling for being chillers they're gonna pick up the dragon soul and we'll see if they are able to find anything in addition to that we's already trying to run mid lane to clear that wave but that could certainly be the defining fight of the game in the series bonfires it's gonna be a six thousand gold lead for the bing chillers yeah that that is that is probably it right now. We'll see right now in the replay how it just came to be. This game's still going on, but this Ragnarok get absolutely nothing done. And that just kind of spelled doom and gloom. A big charm, Saint of Ages able to get himself out of there. But look at the rest of the team. This entire time that Saint of Ages is doing everything that they can, nothing is happening on the other side of the map. They're all running in fear. And, Sometimes the wall is just a little bit too big, and right now it's, it, I mean, that's what it is. Quintic trying to execute. I mean, there's just nothing you can do at that point. And also, this is this is a disaster for Oblivion Esports Ruby, a team that had playoff aspirations, two opportunities to do so. Haven't really found the fights that they've needed. They've been outclassed in the last four games, and it's been a great season for them four and three a winning record a winning game record as well but falling flat at the most important time is not what you want to do going into playoffs it yeah. is brutal it is heartbreak they're down five thousand gold right now baron is in the cards they have they have their olaf clearing the bot lane with no tp even if they wanted to go for this i think their best opportunity is a steal but they don't have any vision you right Quintic. wrong right oh there. Quintic Lord. gets popped like a balloon. This game feels over. And that is what 18 Magi stacks feels like, everybody. Into the face of Quintic. And despite the Super Mega Inferno bomb being tossed in at pretty good timing there um, by Raven's Man, it is not going to find the Baron Oribot smite rings true in the end and now it's going to be a sieged up mid lane here by the members of Ving chiller's fury and yeah i mean the options are pretty limited um i mean there are you know there are some it's not like none of their champions have any strength whatsoever but as a whole it seems very clear that at this point Ving chiller's team comp just looking a lot stronger so many more items here substantial gold leads in multiple lanes and they just want to bring it home yeah, and they have a soul too, and it's a good soul as well. I mean, yeah, if, you can't, if you can't kill them, how about when they have a giant shield on them as well? It's just, it's gonna be tough. Raven's Man does good poke, something to keep in mind, but Anime oh just is currently Lord. losing a 1v1. 22 and, uh, stack yeah. guys, and counting. Yeah. Anime just is losing 25 a 1v1. And Super Chase yeah. finishing yeah. it yeah. like it started with a solo yeah. kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull an NBA moment, and I'm gonna, uh, 2000 Vince Carter dunk competition. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. It's over. Uh, Oblivion Esports Ruby, not the end that they wanted. The end that they are going to get. Yeah, it feels a little underwhelming for sure here, but for Bing Chillers. Um, I guess kind of the opposite here. They needed to beat the odds coming into this qualifying stage and win both of their series. They took down Khan Esports Z last week. And this week, they will look to take down their opponents in Oblivion Esports Ruby. It will be the shutdown going on to Oribot, but the Nexus is going to be open. Will they find the rest of the fight here? Is you wrong me right? Gonna go legendary, has the 25 stack. Magi's now into the back line here as JS Chaotic. Can he find some kind of miracle? Gonna pop the Maw of Malmordius, but it's not enough. You wrong me right. 
25 stack magis, no deaths in this game. Not even the fountain can take him down. And it's the Bing Chillers punching their ticket to the APL playoffs. And taking down Oblivion Esports Ruby in dominant fashion. Nice work. Yeah, Bing Chillers in furious fashion, uh, able Rude. to punch their ticket. They get themselves to the playoffs. If you're Oblivion Esports Ruby, it's it's a heartbreaker. But uh, the better team won today. Saint of Ages zero and six on the Olaf Quintic zero and six on the Ivern Super Chase seven and two on the Gragas. And then the uh, honestly the story of the day. You wrote me right eight zero and six on this LeBlanc, and so they did what they needed to do. They qualify, they've made their way into playoffs, and if you're one of the top teams that has to play them, you've gotta be a little bit concerned, because yes, they have their weaknesses, they're not a super team by any means, but they can do something. They are on a little bit of a streak right now, and I don't think there's a single team in the APL that wants to face the Bing Chillers Fury right now, because they look like they are on a mission. And uh, I would hate to be the team that has to face them in the middle of their rampage. But as of right now, as of tonight, it is going to be BCFS, BCSF, and, uh, moving on to the playoffs. Pop the champagne, boys, you've done it. Yeah. Um, and like you said, would be um, an intimidating team from the wildcard pool coming in here. And the teams actually have... Uh, the top three teams at the very least um, have a selection of who they want to go against. So it will be interesting to see who wants to take on um, who wants to take on the Bing Chillers Fury. We also got CB Rush and the Flash Abusers alongside them in that wild card pool. And then I believe one other team will join them as well. So that's going to be, uh, yeah, that's a wrap, I guess, for the regular season. When we come back, it's going to be playoff action. You know, it's going to be also best of five. So make sure you take your, uh, you know, naps in the middle of the day that you're, of course, able to take on a Thursday randomly so that you can stay up late with us. Um, but that is going to be it here for the APL. Thanks for joining us for another Thursday. It was some great fun. Once again, I was Elsa the Queen, and I was joined here by Bonfire. We had Wookie on the production. Happy to have him back this week. So thank you for so much for being here. Um, we are going to, I believe, send it over to BOL after this. But also I wanted to mention that don't forget that on Friday this week is the start of ACL. I know a lot of people talking on social media about how it's one of the most stacked amateur tournaments in memory. So definitely don't want to miss out on that high level action either Friday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, I believe. Uh, but anyways, everyone from everyone here at Aegis, we are going to send it out. Have a great rest of the evening. Stay safe, and we'll see you back next week.